Hello, welcome to an old man running. Um, up in Cleveland this weekend, my wife and I are going to the Browns Jets game tomorrow. Really looking forward to that. And I'm also really looking forward to a 10k race. It's here, Shaker Lakes race. As an older runner, I like to savour every chance I get to run in a race because, you know, when you get older, you never know when you might have that injury that stops you running for a long time or even forever. I've got a very good friend who actually had to stop running and I got the chance to interview him recently about all the other things he does from an exercise perspective that have replaced the running that he used to do and I thought it was just a fascinating overview and it also let me realise that even if I get to the point where I can't run anymore there's always plenty of options for keeping fit and living a good and healthy lifestyle. So I hope you enjoy the interview with Peter. So I guess that you're not really a runner, right? You you keep fit through other means. Well, Dave, I used to be a very strong runner and a very good runner, particularly during my Ironman days, first being in 1986. And then I also did some ultra marathons, uh, the Comrades Marathon in South Africa, which is oh, really 89.1 kilometers, I think it was. And as I said, in my triathlon days, I used to really enjoy running. In those days, I was probably about 15 kilograms lighter than I am now. Yeah, yeah. The 80 kilogram uh, range. And, uh, you know, that was sustainable for me. And four and a half minute kilometers sort of uh, half marathons wasn't untoward for me at that stage. Oh, Unfortunately, I, you know, I had an accident in 2014 and I shattered the talus bone in my right hand heel. And as a result of, of successive operations, they decided, the experts decided to fuse the ankle. So I have uh, pins that sort of go through the back of my heel into the ankle. And at the same time, I shattered all my, my toes, except a big toe on my, on my right foot. So there were pins through my toes, which eventually the pins through my toes came out. And the doctor warned me that it would happen. It sort of got arthritic and I used to get arthritis yeah. in my toes. So the right hand foot is a problem. And when I run, it's, it's, it's quite funny, really. It's more of a hobble than it is a run. So yeah. I had a look at alternative uh, methods. Fortunately, you know, with triathlons, I was into my cycling as well. Yeah. And I also uh, really enjoy offshore paddling, which is a great sort of uh, upper body workout, including the core, really, uh, because yeah. you're sitting in a boat and you're rotating. And uh, when you're out there on the waves, uh, balancing itself is a core exercise. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed a lot of that. Having said that, I missed running and recently I went to an orthopedic surgeon to see if we could find some kind of advances in ankle replacement technology, but mm -hmm. that's still at an early stage yet. It's nothing like knee or hip replacements yet. Yeah, and right. his advice to me was it's not worth the risk at your age. Right. So cycling, um, I enjoy gym fitness and at the same time we really enjoy as a family whenever I have the opportunity at home is to go hiking on long hikes uh, yeah. you know, sort of technical hikes that's that's a lot of fun it's a great exercise particularly if you're uh, carrying a backpack and yeah. you know, like any exercise if you pace yourself correctly I mean walking hiking any of those exercises for advanced age people becomes a, a very good um, alternative exercise. One of the things I've discovered when I'm running is low heart rate training. So I'll like, I'll do a lot, a ton of low heart rate training, like 80% of it. And then I'll do like really hard stuff and very little in between. Is there an equivalent to that in, in the cycling? Oh, absolutely, David. I mean, it's become such a science um, and there's so much information available. I do find that some of it can be overbearing and too much information. And I think if you're not doing it competitively and you're doing it to stay fit is a different matter altogether. If you want to get competitive, then intervals and things like in running like fart lack, I thought always was, was very beneficial, you know, alternating heart rates. And at the same time, in our younger days, we didn't really concentrate on recovery periods like they do today. Recovery yeah. periods are a huge thing in a number of advances in your your running technique i guess and the same goes for cycling there's there's a there's a very big following these days on uh, low heart rate training mm -hmm. now that's easier said than done when you are 96 kilograms and you're carrying a lot of muscle and you get to hills it's very difficult to maintain a low heart rate otherwise you know yeah. sort of get up so I think, you know, if you want to make a science of it, there's so much information available. And if you mm. follow the science, there are benefits, no doubt about it. Do you track your heart rate as a rule when you're, when you're out exercising? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All my uh, fancy watches are buried, and I only <laughs> find any benefit from my Garmin watch because it gives me everything that I need. Yeah. And what's Do great you? about uh, my Garmin watch is that it's coupled to my medical scheme. So uh -huh. it provides information to that medical scheme and you get benefits. Oh, really? By, uh, oh, that's being cool. fit, yeah, which, yeah. Is, which is really neat. I live and die by this Garmin watch. How does the exercise that you do, does that keep the weight off for you or do you need to watch your diet as well? I need to watch my diet. Fortunately, we healthy eaters and I'm a healthy eater. The, the biggest mm -hmm. problem is sleep disruption. And with the traveling that we do, the different time zones, yeah, that becomes difficult to manage. Yes. Break that sleep cycle. If you break that rest cycle, um, energy levels tend to get depleted. And I think it's more of a psychological thing by you know arriving at a venue at midnight one o'clock in the morning in a totally different time zone and then forcing yourself to get into the gym so that your body can try and uh, equalize if you like eating food at midnight because you've been traveling for 18 hours um, it's not necessarily good for you so it's a mindset and it's a strict sort of discipline that you have to condition yourself into to eat right train right and sometimes drag yourself into the hotel gym yeah. Uh, and and generally when I get into these gyms, I, I concentrate more on cardiovascular than I do on weights. Uh, mm -hmm. My weight training is diminished to light weights. I read an article many years ago. Um, I'm a firm believer in a acronym called uh, TUT, TUT, is time under tension. And uh, any gym work that I try and do, I try to be more rhythmic about it than yanking at heavy weights. Yeah. So keeping the muscles under tension all the time and getting into a sequence of sets that works the, the overall muscle. And that also provides a longer burn, if you like. That kind of goes into a wee bit of the, like the tension part, I think, goes into the whole kind of hot yoga and Pilates thing. And I mean, you introduced me to the concept of trying those out and I have, but do you still regularly do either or both of those when you can? My wife has to take credit for taking me to heart yoga. And uh -huh. um, initially I was, well, all right, you know, I'll go. And uh, I kind of scoffed at the idea. And after my first session, I, I realized that it's definitely beneficial. And the more you do it, the more I found uh, hot yoga to be almost a cleansing exercise, if you like. Uh, mm -hmm. When you get out of a hot yoga session, first of all, I'm, I, I sweat very easily. So I lose uh, liquids very easily yeah um and you know by the time i was done with my first session it looked like a swimming pool underneath me uh, and yeah, i look at too. all yeah. the uh, young ladies around me and uh, not one of them have even pushed a bead of sweat what so, i found the longer i did that the more flexible i became number one which was a great advantage and secondly i have a, f a lower uh, fusion on my spine i have a fixed ankle i have various injuries from various uh -huh. activities in, in my lifetime i found the yoga less harsh on those injuries and my flexibility started coming back at the same time i also found that doing hot yoga constantly was a great uh, weight loss benefit for, from from doing hot yoga it becomes intense and pilates is just a different level as you know yeah. pilates becomes more of a tension on the muscles type of yoga that's the way yeah. i see it i mean I, i'm a layman when it comes to yoga and pilates i mean there's some really gifted people that that participate yeah. in the types of activities but i found them extremely beneficial there's nothing greater than early morning yoga session hot yoga session an hour and a half of vikram and then uh, having a nice uh, healthy breakfast afterwards but i find yoga and pilates fascinating the only thing with the yoga for me is i'm i'm extremely inflexible and i just hate it comes back to the competitiveness thing again i hate being the worst person in the class it just drives me nuts but you know just got to accept sometimes that uh, <laughs> I know. Yeah, 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 I know. yeah. I mean, yeah. When you had your double hip replacement, did you ever think that you'd be running and competing again as a no, I didn't. Group? No, I didn't. I really didn't. There you go. Yeah. You yeah. Go. Well, you yeah. again, you had that mindset and you were determined to do it. Yeah. Just to wrap up, thanks a lot. This has been great. What's your advice if you could say one thing to somebody like like if you looked at me a year ago, I was thirty kilos heavier than I am right now, and totally inactive um, and there's a lot of people at that our age I feel like you get to a point and you can go one way or the other 
what would you say to somebody that was in that situation and just trying to find a way to start and to do something? You know, I'm old school and there's only one way. It's perseverance. There's a lot, large portion of the population, and particularly in today's age where life is, is relatively easy or have never pushed their bodies to anywhere near the limit. You know, it's, it's a mindset, Dave. You know, the mind is an incredibly powerful thing. I've known of incredibly obese people that have turned it around. I think, you know, once people have felt that joy of competing and of achieving something, pounding the road, whether they're cycling, whether they on the open ocean, kayaking somewhere, it's that achievement and that self-fulfillment of having competed against yourself. Um, yeah. Because let's face it, not everybody is competitive and not everybody wants to win everything. But at the same time, the achievement coming from having a good physique and a healthy physique and translates to your everyday life. Yeah, if you can get that first sense of achievement and build off of that and just keep just keep going from there. 